I think that should work. <laughs> yep. We're on everything. Yay! Yay! <laughs> And you can see us. So welcome to today's podcast, guys. Super excited to uh, to get this thing rolling. You don't even understand how excited <laughs> I am. I got Carly with me. Hello. Say hi, Carly. Hi. Let's see. Uh, let me just check and make sure. Yeah, right there. We're live. It's official. Wait. It's official. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Uh, I got a fun podcast for you guys. Those of you that heard this intro already, you're going to hear it again because uh, technical difficulties, as always. Um, all right. So first things first, this pro- uh, this product, this podcast <laughs> is brought to you by an amazing product, MinervaBeauty.com. Uh, Minerva Beauty is the best salon furniture in the industry at the best price. They uh, We use all their furniture in our salon. They've been a supporter of free salon education since the beginning. Love those guys. Uh, so check out MinervaBeauty.com if you're looking to upgrade your salon. Also, Sideline is an app for your iPhone that is your side phone number. So your business phone number. If you're looking to uh, carry your business with you, basically. Um, Being able to have a separate voicemail, text message from a separate number, have an 800 number for your business, all for $9.99 per month. Uh, It's a pretty awesome deal, especially for salon suite uh, renters and uh, stylists that are just on the go and work by themselves, Uh, but don't need to talk to their clients 24 hours a day, but can still be connected. So check out Sideline. It's an app, iPhone, Android, download it uh, and check that out. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in. I do have a chat up here. I can see, um, I can see from Facebook. I can see from YouTube. So I pretty much see everything. Um, so that is that. Uh, today, I want to talk about some things that we brought up earlier in the week, which was henna hair color. Mm. Yeah. So I don't think you, I know if it was Brian on that show. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the henna hair color uh, thing, we were discussing. We were trying to figure out because I thought I had seen something online about professional hair color, but it was henna based. Okay. Um, so we did look that up. Uh, it was confirmed that matrix or, uh, biolage mm-hmm. hair color, um, <laughs> is, is coming. I don't know if it's out yet or if it's coming out, but I got all the information. I reached out to matrix and I did get, um, some of the facts about that. So I want to talk about it because, uh, in our industry, henna is not, necessarily known as being a great thing. Right. Um, so I definitely want to just kind of open up that conversation. Those of you guys that uh, do know about this, some of you said it was Matrix in the chat when we were talking about it. I just wanted to confirm before we brought it up and I wanted to have the facts about it before I make any you know thoughts or opinions. So uh, what I want to do today is just kind of go over what it's all about because it is interesting and I don't believe that um, any pro- major professional brand has made this move. Uh, So I do want to talk about it. So they say that they're looking to uh, disrupt the color within the salon and appeal to a new client or address the unmet needs of some current clients. So Biolage uh, Color helps you do just that. Uh, What is it? It's plant-based hair color that works like traditional hair color. Um, Biolage Color is made of henna. Um, Cassia, I think that's how you say it. And less than 10% direct dyes. So it's not a classic henna based color. Um, It uses red henna, which is processed to remove metallic salts. So uh, there's a bunch of technical stuff, which I'm sure you guys can find online. I don't really want to go too deep into that. But um, the the biggest thing is that, um, let's see, the direct dyes help to control warmth. It doesn't lift at all. Um, So I, I do like that. And um, it's all about creating shine in the hair. So I think that's pretty much it. Paired with coconut oil to maximize smoothness, it presents all shades with heavier concentrations in uh, blonde shades as well. So I think that's it. Biolage color is uh, not only for your clients looking for a natural option, but can be used for uh, corrective color services such as filling, gray blending up to 70% gray, and maintaining the integrity and texture of the hair during the color process. Toning, strengthening, um, and the shade palette offers toning shades to uh, gray blending shades. I don't understand. But, so basically you can use it for everything. (laughs) You can literally use it for everything. Which So here's my thoughts 
um, after looking it over and just before I've uh, actually used it, yeah. is that um, it's demi color, okay. right? right. Um, but it and saying it covers seventy percent gray, I think, is one of those things where um, you know some demi colors uh, react as blending instead of fully covering. Um, but I don't even, I think the 70%, it's not like it's cut, it's covering 70% of the hairs and leaving 30% of the hair. It, what it's actually doing is it's kind of, uh, adding a tonality to some of the gray that's going to take it. And then yeah. the other parts that aren't probably aren't going to get as colored, but if you're looking for something that doesn't affect the client's hair, or if you are a client, um, of a salon and you're looking for something that doesn't damage, go the demi route anyways. Right. Like I think, um, you know, making sure that we're educating our guests on the fact that Demi hair color is a great option if you're if you're not totally like I can't see gray, I don't want to see gray. Yeah. Uh, it is a really good option, but this is cool. Um, I like that they're pushing it and and the henna thing. Maybe it'll. I, I don't know a whole lot about henna yeah. hair color, but I do know there's a lot of negative around it. Mm -hmm. So it's a bold move to go and uh, and make a hair color based with it, but. Um, Obviously, there's benefits to it. It's plant-based. It's right. natural. So those clients that are looking for a more natural, like our clients are way more cautious now of what goes in their hair. So I think it's probably uh, a huge benefit to have in the salon. What do you guys think? Let me know uh, in the chat. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Make more videos about boy hair step by step. Okay. Um, I actually was thinking about... Um, doing a men's cut today. I'm not going to, I'll do it next week um, on the show, but I just felt like I didn't know where the questions were gonna go. So today we will cut hair. Um, I'm going to, Carly's gonna shampoo the mannequin behind me in a little bit and we're gonna get it ready. Um, I wanna do some some short haircuts. I was actually thinking of like some short haircutting techniques in there. Uh, all right, cool. Let's see, hello to everyone. I see you all. All right. Chat's going good. Okay. Can you lift it off with lightener? Um, so based on what I'm reading here for the matrix hair color, I believe, um, or the biolage hair color, um, it seems very, uh, very much that you can lift it out. Like it, it seems more, there's the, so it's no lift, zero damage, vegan, gluten-free hair color, right? No sulfates. Um, it's not only for clients looking for that natural option, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I think it's definitely, I would say, just along the same lines. And I will confirm this. Um, I'm sure I will get an email about it. And then I'll bring it to you guys next week. But I'm sure that it's because it's more, seems like in the demi category, it would be uh, able to lift it out. I know that your worry would be, henna you normally like if somebody says they have henna hair color on their hair you're not getting it right. out of the hair <laughs> but i think this is different like i think they were mixing probably henna i don't think it's the henna that was the bad part i think mm -hmm. it was whatever they were putting in it uh direct dye wise to get in there mm -hmm. um all right cool so another thing i wanted to talk about today was uh an article that i read on modern salon uh their website i found it interesting because it was basically saying that the the salon industry right now is not growing uh, or it's, it's growing very little. Um, so they're saying that da, 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 top revenues for all salon industry services, hair, skin, and nails, plus salon retail grew only 1.8% um, in, uh, in 2018. So basically, uh, they, wh what I found interesting about this article, it says the state of our salon industry is still weak and in a very low growth mode due to com uh, a complex multiplicity of factors. Um, they got this report from the professional consultants and resources. They're saying that the salon suite tsunami has driven <laughs> salon retail to Amazon and other e-commerce platforms, Ulta and mass retail diversion. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, not so much that the salon industry has only grown, you know, the 1.8%, but the fact is it is in a big shift right now. And what I'm finding interesting about this article is that they're saying that the um, that it's a salon suite tsunami that's causing people to go to Amazon, where when I I truly believe that like you 
salon suites aren't causing people to go to Amazon. People are going to Amazon because it's very convenient. And I was also thinking about the fact that like when I go shopping for anything now, like I might be in a store, let's Mm -hmm. say it's like Best Buy or something, Mm -hmm. and I'm looking at a product, but then I'll pull up Amazon because I don't want just one person's opinion on that product. I want to see multiple reviews Mm -hmm. of that same product, and then I'll probably even order it so that I don't have to wait in the checkout line in Best Buy, I'll order it on my way out, yeah. you know, on my phone, and it'll be there the next day. So we're in a world, it's not salon suites that are creating, I mean, they <laughs> might be disrupting a little bit, but um, the salon industry in, in itself is, um, has been doing this to itself for years. Right. Like before salon suites, I know because um, being a salon owner for 10 years, the average stylist is selling like 0.3 products per guest, mm-hmm. right? And that's like a good stylist. So, um, like that means that you're not really selling mm-hmm. to anybody because a lot of stylists are, um, like not salesmen, Yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So what happens is they either feel bad about selling products or they don't truly believe that the client needs that product or, um, you've got other stylists that are salesmen oh, yeah. and they sell product. But, um, we're in an industry where if the average stylist is selling less than a bottle per guest, then that means that there's going to be a, dec- like clients are not getting the information about the products. And if they're not getting the information about the products, they're not going to buy the product. And if they don't buy it from you, they're going to see it on a commercial and then they're going to buy it on Amazon. Right. That's what you don't want. Yeah. (laughs) And that's what you don't want. Right. And, but the bigger question is like, well, why don't you want it? Like in your mind as a new stylist. Uh, Mainly because like you should be the one to be educating your guest about these products. And like, if you're, especially if you're using them in the salon, like you should know what you're putting into somebody there. Right. Um, so there shouldn't, you know, there shouldn't be a reason why, and you don't necessarily have to be a salesman about it. You just have to say, okay, this is what I'm using in your hair. This is what it does. And like, if they're seeing you explain that to them, they might think, oh, okay, like maybe I'll get it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think it's Heather saying pretty much the same thing. Starts in the consultation and the finishing. Uh, if we are doing the education, everyone is using and buying it somewhere. Yeah. We are the expert. And that's totally true. The problem is that stylists, and I was having this conversation with Christina yesterday, people in general um, just get lazy. Yeah. Whether it's being somebody behind the chair or um, whatever it is, but we get into a routine behind the chair and then we stop talking about the important things and we start talking about the easy things. Yeah. Um, because we get lazy. So, but then, uh, then things come out like reports and they're like, well, it's this that's causing it. Well, no, it's not. It, what's causing it is laziness. Yeah. Um, it, what's causing it is we're not talk, we're not educating our clientele. And if you're not educating your clientele, then they're going to go get educated somewhere else. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of like, um, when people talk about, um, you know, putting out education like this, this video is out for the public, right? If somebody watches uh, a haircut and they try to do it on themselves, the reason that person is trying to do it on themselves because they've had bad haircuts for a long time. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't try it on yourself, no. right? You would go somewhere like I, I know that there's a lot of things that I can't do, but I know that there's a lot of things that I learned on the Internet how to do. Because I didn't like the way that they were being done in the first place or the experience I was getting when, when doing it, right? So from a retail standpoint, like I look at these reports and I just think, well, first off, I don't know who this person is, um, Cyrus. Um, but he, you know, he looked at the facts and he went down and he said, you know, it's caused because of this, this, and this. Um, I also found this interesting um, so do, 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 where is it? So women opted for, oh, I want to talk about that. Okay. I slowed to 
still the anchor services as of like hair color have slowed to 3% uh, growth, which hair color was booming. It was the craziest growth about, you know, eight, nine years ago. Uh, every company, like I remember uh, working for a hair care company and it was just such a huge focus was hair color. Now every company has a million different kinds of hair color. But the fascinating thing about this is that's slowed to 3% due to lower salon uh, frequencies and women who are concerned about chemical services on their hair um, or they prefer their natural gray, silver, or white look. Women opted for inexpensive cuts and family eco- at f- family economy chains um, and styled their hair at home. So, and then price conscious male uh, clients had their hair cut at sport clips, great clips, super cuts, and barbershops. Uh, so, and those companies, the chain companies, the mm. cheaper companies, it says that they had robust growth. So, this goes to show that, again, it's the same thing. Like, yeah. why are people why are people choosing not to spend money in the salon? Well, they're choosing not to spend money in the salon because the experience of the salon isn't worth the price. Yeah. So the value of the product that you're giving. Now, some salons, like we charge a lot, right? right? Um, not, not a lot, but yeah. we're more expensive than some. Mm-hmm. Um, but we focus on more than just the haircut, yeah. right? So that's kind of the goal. And, uh, and we don't do it right. And, and everybody that works here isn't necessarily doing it all correct all the time. So I don't want to, I'm not trying to paint a picture of we know what we're doing and uh, other people don't. That's not the case. But, um, but when you look at the facts, like why women don't want to come in as often to get their hair colored is because, first off, the trend mm-hmm. changed. So roots became okay. Yeah. Like before you had like this much root, it was like you were trying to hide that you're not really a blonde, right? And now it's like fine to have roots. It's been like that for a long time. Uh, fantasy color kind of moved in there. So you could you could lighten your hair and not have to lighten it for three months and have some fun with it, but you didn't have to invest as much money yeah. uh, into your hair. So uh, found that kind of interesting as well. And then with the men uh, stuff, I, I always felt like, men were always somewhat trying to get cheaper haircuts. Yeah. I have a pretty big male clientele. It's 80% of my clients at this point. Um, but I believe that that's, and they pay $45 for a haircut. Right. But there's a difference like in area and all of that. And I do think that people are getting their color done at a more expensive place and getting their cut done oh, yeah. now at cheaper places. They don't see the value in the cut. I'm hoping that that will change again. <laughs> But if, if we're not putting out unbelievable haircuts, like if people aren't pushing themselves to get better and better, then people, there's no reason for them to go. They're paying $60 for a cut somewhere that they could get for $15 somewhere else. Right. Like if you're just picking up the hair and cutting it and you're not really keeping yourself educated. So goal would be to make sure that you are constantly educating yourself so that uh, we can turn these numbers around and I'm not even saying it for the retail numbers. Like that's, I don't know what we can do about retail. Like I think Amazon is um, going to be a big uh, disruptor in what we're doing, obviously. But I do think that Amazon is also trying to tie into salons as well so that salons do get kicked back. Um, But I think that's kind of inevitable. Like the internet is just going to take over that. But services, you can do something about for sure. Um, Let's see, Sarah. I'm a stylist of 15 years and I work at Great Clips and I love it. I worked in a booth rental salon in the past, had my own salon. I do miss it, but I also love just just cutting hair as well. Cool. Um, let me see. And she posted that comment like a hundred times. That's smart. That's smart. I saw it. Uh, you just said you don't trust the opinion of the one person at Best Buy and then you say clients don't buy because their stylist isn't giving enough information. Well, um, I guess that's a good call, but at the same time, if, I I think it goes back to what I just said. Like, I think Amazon's gonna take over retail. I don't think there's anything that we can do as stylists that are going to necessarily turn that around, but I do think you could up your numbers for sure, especially right now, because it's not 100% Amazon. Yeah. You do have products in your salon. 
Um, so if you are educated and you're educating the guests, you're going to see a huge difference in your retail numbers if you're actually just doing that and not just assuming they're going to go to Amazon, right? Just mm -hmm. put, putting out that education. Now, they might not believe you. The guy at Best Buy, I might not believe him either, but um, some people will. Right. Right. Exactly. That's just least, what I do. At least you have those two options. You know, it's not like you have those two opinions or however many opinions. It's not just one. Right. Like one opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. So that is that on that. That is that on that. that, is that, on that. <laughs> um, so moral of today, and I know this is a kind of an overload on a Friday, I feel like, but the podcast is called Woke Up This This Way, and this is how I woke up. I woke up, I read that, and I got a little bit like, um, I just feel like people blame the wrong things uh, sometimes. And we have to start kind of looking at ourselves in a way and say, well, why aren't my numbers where I want them? It's not Amazon's fault. I mean, it could be if you let it, but I, like, I'm going to choose. I, I do hair today in the salon when I get behind the chair with my guests, I'm going to choose to talk to them about products, educate them on styling their hair, and I'm going to choose to make Amazon um, to compete with them today uh, behind the chair. And I have, I have, um, I can't compete with Amazon on a big scale, but between me and selling that product, I can compete with Amazon. Uh, so make it a game and have fun with it. And Honestly, just educate them better than Amazon reviews can, and you won't have to worry about it. Um, Heather says, Amazon doesn't give a style lesson. I have guests uh, purchased. I have guests purchase a item they do not need. They purchase off reviews. And that's the other thing, too. Like, I think honesty plays into it. So, like, if you're, as a salesman, um, you could be a, kind of a, a BS salesman, mm -hmm. right? And sell somebody something they don't need, but that's not, that's playing like a short results kind of thing. Yeah. Like you might get the sale that day, but then all of a sudden that when that guest comes back, they're like, that didn't really do anything for me. So now all of a sudden, you know, you can't sell anything to them again. Mm -hmm. It It's kind of, uh, it's the same way with everything. Like sales, you have to play kind of more long-term and build like we've said a million times, relationships with the guests. Yeah. And the relationship is going to be better based on honesty and not based on just trying to sell a product. Education sells. Um, you educate the guest on a style or a product. Um, they make the choice of whether that product fits. You give a recommendation, and then I think you have a win-win. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's... Hilda says, love your work. Thank you. It's our responsibility to educate the client. I agree with you. Den I don't know if that... I always... Uh, I wonder if Amazon will partner with pro salon brands to get legit products not tainted. Mm. Just so you know, um, and I'm sure some of you guys do know this, Amazon is partnering with almost all the brands. Yeah. They are one by one partnering with them. And that's why I said like... Um, not only are they partnering with the brands, there's like a salon section on Amazon now. So that is apparently diversion free. Uh, it's legit. There are certain brands that have partnered with Amazon. Now, are those brands going to help you um, make get a kickback from that sale? Because then that changes the whole thing. Like for me, when me and Christina opened the salon 10 years ago or 11 years ago, whatever it was, um, we had like four thousand dollars total when we opened it like there was and then we went out and we bought three thousand dollars worth of mirrors and retail shelves and we painted the salon to yeah. make it our own and then literally we left with like a thousand bucks and then you have to do a color order which is always a thousand dollars and then or more and then you have no money for retail yeah. like if you want to see uh, you know talk about disrupting an industry if you're able to partner your salon with something like Amazon and you don't have to actually carry the product, but then you can sell it um, in your salon and it ships to them the next day and they don't even, you don't have to buy retail bags, you don't have to buy anything, you don't have to stock shelves with thousands of dollars worth of retail products. To me, I think that that's going to help salons mm -hmm. more than anything mm -hmm. I, because 
our salon, like there were times where we couldn't, it's so hard to stock um, the shelves with a lot of product when you have to buy color right? and you have to pay payroll. And like as a small salon, there's like so many things that you have to do. So um, you, it's, it's difficult. And if you didn't have to stock the shelves, I think it would be very helpful. Um, <laughs> okay. Sahara says, Matt, but I love how you teach education and I watch you all the time and your techniques all the time. I'm always learning and my clientele base has raised over 60% along, but I suck at selling products. <laughs> well, first Why? off, the first, yeah, the first thing is, you know, you do. So that's good. Yeah. Like as long as you're owning it mm -hmm. and then try to, try to not think of it as selling. Yeah. Think of it as educating. Mm -hmm. Educate yourself. If you know, the more you know about a product, the, the thing about product sales is funny because when a new product comes out, it sells like crazy. Mm -hmm. Why does it sell like crazy? Because everyone talks about mm -hmm. it, right? The product that's been sitting on the bottom shelf of our retail that hasn't been new for 10 years doesn't sell because it's not new. It's not being talked about. Uh, and so you don't sell it. So uh, I don't, I don't really want to turn this podcast into like retail sales one-on-one like because I mean, it's fine, but I know it's not everybody's favorite thing, but at the same time, like, especially if you get paid to sell products, like if you get a percentage, then that's easy. That it, because selling a product takes no more time out of your day. So if you get a percentage of that sale, even if it's small, people don't look at it like, you don't even have to, camera died. Um, you don't even have to like put any effort into like, it doesn't take any more time. So like if I wanted to make more money and I had to add a haircut to my book, it takes me another hour out of my day to do that haircut. If I'm doing that haircut and I'm selling a product to somebody and getting also a percentage on that product, that's like a win-win because it doesn't take any more time. So you got to look at like, if you want to be successful, you got to look at how much time you're putting into it and how much money you're making in that amount of time. Right. Yeah. So, um, a little trick that they taught us in school was to read the, um, back of the product and just kind of re repeat yeah. in your own words, like the first few lines of what the product is and what it does. And yep. this way you don't even have to think, Oh gosh, what am I going to, like, what do I say? What It's right there for you. So That's actually a great point, Carly. Do you know that, so uh, Sam Burns, the guy that uh, I used to work for, yeah. he um, he had this thing with, like, Paul Mitchell bottle. This isn't a Paul Mitchell bottle. But <laughs> on the bottle, they spend, hunt, like, thousands of dollars on that first, like, three sentences, right? That's not cheap to write what that product does. But then we spend, like, as hairdressers, we spend so much time trying to come up with what we want to say about the product, but like literally there's just thousands of like of dollars worth of <laughs> words on the bottle already yeah. that explain exactly what it does. So if you're looking for an opening line on a product, yes, read um, that very beginning part. And then that's so, so easy to start your conversation. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. From Ohio, amazing guys. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge and experiences. I watch your vlogs almost daily as a student and when I become a cosmetologist. Sweet, Joel. You're, you're the man. I actually, I think I'm going to Ohio. I think I am. I think it's in the fall, though. But it's Cosmoprof show in Ohio. I think it's, what's the city? Not Cincinnati. Cleveland, I think. I think I'm going to Cleveland. So hopefully I'll see you there. All right. Cool. So what do you guys, um, let's put this out there. I'm going to cut some hair. Do you want to go? Yeah. Uh, we'll get the mannequin ready. It's going to be a shorter cut. So give me some themes of something short, um, that I can do on the mannequin. Uh, I want to do, it's probably going to be, you know, more pixie ish a little bit. I'm trying to recycle some of these older mannequins so that I'm not cutting fresh ones, uh, all the way down. But, uh, let's see. Oh, that's a good one. Put it in their hand. I think it's D Dennis. Um, yeah, when, once somebody touches something, they take ownership of it. That's like sales 101. So um, if you're talking about a product and you're holding it, 
you talk about it and then you put it back on the shelf that they don't really take ownership of that. They don't feel like they need it. But if you hand it to them and they can look at it and then it becomes more of their own, it becomes their thing, um, that tends to work a lot better. All righty. Let's see. Cut from Wreck-It Ralph. What is that? The difference between all stacked bobs. That's a good question. Um, Sergeant Calhoun's cut from Wreck-It Ralph. Let's see what that is. I feel like... All right, I'm looking it up. Oh, got you. Okay. That's a pretty cool... We should do something like that. Maybe that's the cut I'll do. I like that idea. Asymmetrical shortcut. That, yes. Oh, yeah, same person. All right, Susan, you're the winner today. I'm going to do that haircut. Paul Mitchell Associate. That's where they taught. Yeah, that's where I learned it, too. So Paul Mitchell training, sales 101, uh, handing the person the product, and it, they take ownership of it. Oh, jeez. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. So thank you to you guys for, uh, for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, we are going to start cutting some hair. I'm going to, I'm actually going to get started over there, um, getting everything ready. So just hang on for one second and we'll get it going. All right. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So, see if I can come in here. All right. So, we are going to be going over um, a cut. Let me know if you can hear this good. I can see your chat over there. Ooh, my hair is out of control. Thank you, Carly. And do you want to grab me Paul, like uh, Palm Patrol invisible wear stuff? So this mannequin actually has a little bit of an undercut. So we're going to be cutting into that, kind of connecting that, so you can see how it's shorter in there. So I wanted to recycle this thing, but um, it's actually gonna kind of work to our benefit as well. All right, so we'll comb this back. Yes, you can hear, very cool, sweet. All right, so I'm going to comb everything straight back towards me. Lower this a little bit. Thank you, Carly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go parietal ridge on both sides. So I'll follow that. Parietal ridge is kind of where the hair starts to fall, where the curve of the head goes down. 
So what I'll do is I kind of comb this back and then I'll look right in the middle of the eyebrow and that's about where I'll take it. So there's not going to be a ton of hair because we have that undercut. And then I'll work this around here. Then I'm going to come across right here across mid crown. Just like that. So I'm creating a rectangle line across parietal cross mid crown. And then I'm going to connect it back on this side. Now, what I like to do for, um, to connect these two points. So like I've got right here, this is a little fun fact. Let me zoom in. A um, little fun fact. We've got this point here. So in order to get a balanced uh, point on the top of the head, what I'll do is I'll turn this. I'll take a look at it just like this, and I'll figure out where that point is, and I'll balance it with my thumb. So where my thumb is is where I want to connect these two points together, and I'll comb this forward just to get the hair kind of flowing in that direction, and then I'll take it from back here, and to my thumb. And once it hits my thumb, I know exactly that I've got that point exactly where I want it in the front of the head and I've got a nice balanced top. Now it might not be perfect every time, I'll take a look at it and see, but it's closer than you probably would get without doing that. Twist that, clip it away. I'm gonna try to be better at reading your guys' questions as well today. Sometimes it's hard to cut hair and read at the same time, but we'll get better at it as we keep doing these shows. All right, so now we've got the parietal ridge separated. So now I just go through and I make sure I clean up that section fully. my line there there we go all right so I'm gonna start working on the sides and I'm gonna connect no matter what if I had this undercut or not I actually like the length of this undercut I would work diagonal back. So I'm gonna connect those. I'll probably take a little bit off this undercut so you guys can see um, a little bit of a slight change in it. But um, here, here we go. So diagonal back parting, about finger width uh, section. I comb it out. And now what I wanna be careful of is this hair is gonna flow over the top this way. So I don't want to build up too much weight by shifting my finger angle back. I want the finger to stay nice and tight to the head. Um, so I'll do a slight bit of elevation right here, cutting down. Then I'll recomb and shift my finger angle in towards the head. You can see not too much of a buildup of weight here, but um, a slight bit just so it kind of works with the curve of the head, but sh shifting that finger angle really helps with that. So now diagonal back parting, bringing that to the previous. So now we're gonna be working with a traveling guide here. Just like that. And that connects into that undercut, same thing. So let me see if I shift this, you guys can see better. Let me see. So right here, comb it up to the previous. Just working with a little bit of elevation so I'm not building up too much of a weight line. Diagonal back to the previous.
Carly, if you see any questions, just shout them out. So the key for me is this elevation right here. The head shape is shifting, right? So because the head shape is shifting over, if I were to keep this elevation really low, it would get heavier and heavier because of the head. So just making sure that as I comb my section, diagonal back, and I bring this up here, my finger, I wanna check this angle not to be too low, but to be straight just like that. And that's a, basically a 45 degree angle at that point. This is 90 out of the head. So you can see that that's at about 45. This would be about zero, right? So just coming out that 45 degree angle is gonna help get a nice soft graduation in the cut. And we're just continuing around the head. Now, what changes is when we get to this back portion here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue through the back, bringing it to the previous. But now, once I start in this next section, I'm gonna start more of a stationary guide at this point. So take my parting and I over direct it over to that previous point. Oh, it's blurring up. Look at that. Uncool camera. It's that autofocus life. Can't, can't be there. I think that's good. All right. So same thing here. Bring it over to me. I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can get a better angle. So now, because I started to over direct it, this gets a little bit heavier. So I keep continuing through the back, bringing it over to that point, and that's just gonna start pushing weight into that center crown area. The reason I like that is because I like to have a little buildup of weight in the crown. I don't wanna continue through here and just remove all this weight. Um, I like having that kind of nice angled feel to the weight distribution, just sitting right at the occipital bone right there. Diagonal back, bring it over to me. And remember, this is going to get long, but we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So then we'll crisscross and cut it off. Just like that. Yeah, that's good over here and after this section I can actually stop because all of this hair will be cut again but you can see how much longer it gets how heavy it gets over here and we're pushing that weight that way and we're gonna come back around the other side so just like this Comb the hair back. And now, biggest difference here is that my fingers are gonna be pointing down. On the other side, they were pointing up. This is more uh, for combing purposes to make sure that I'm always combing the hair in the same direction, which is towards the face as I work my way through. Elevation, the struggle here with elevation and where a lot of people have issues is because your elbow is now in the air, so I'm lifting my elbow up like this, and anytime you lift your elbow, it wants to fall, um, just naturally. So you gotta make sure you keep this angle and focus on that elbow. Um, even though it doesn't feel as comfortable, it's still important to make sure that that's exactly where you're focused throughout this cut. So diagonal back, comb it towards me, Lift that elbow up, cut along the guide. Diagonal 
Diagonal back. Elevation up. I see all the compliments, guys. Thank you for that. If you have questions, though, love to hear that. Am I so thoroughly speaking about this cut? <laughs> we know that's not the case. All right. Working my way towards the back. Almost got the sides done. Now, if I didn't have an undercut, I would obviously just continue this cutting all the way down and shift my finger angle to make sure that I was basically 90 degrees out from the head shape all the way down. So I would continue through here all the way down and shift my finger angle to the head uh, as I came around. But because of the previous undercut, it's just making our lives a little bit easier. And you also don't want to start the over direction of this corner too early. So like as we start bringing everything over, I don't want to start that too early because then I'll get too much weight in there. I just want a subtle bit of length in this center area. So if I started it here, I would push too much weight and it would just look funny and wouldn't look balanced. Um, so as I go through and I'm really being aware of when I start that over direction. This is coming straight out from the head still um, until I round that corner. And I'll do one more kind of straight out from the head. Um. Yeah. Okay. You want to read it into the mic? So everybody hears it. <clears throat> this one is from Lauren. She says, is your end goal to have a strong disconnect from the top and the sides? I tuned in late. <laughs> um, so no. Uh, it's not going to be a strong disconnect, but I will have a disconnect. So um, I'm creating. I don't want a strong disconnect from the back. I guess that's the first thing I want to say. So the disconnect isn't even happening yet. This is all connected. And then this top portion, I'm going to connect to this back section. Um, so I will be pushing extra length to the front. It will be disconnected in this kind of front right corner. Um, but I'm going to do some slide cutting techniques and different things to show you guys how we texturize into that. So this will just pull this whole section over. But that's kind of why I'm creating this uh, buildup of weight in the center. So you guys can see here how it builds up, it's got a little bit of extra weight and then kind of tucks in a little more towards the neck. Um, that's, that hair, this hair here was built by that over direction in the back. So pulling everything to this corner on each corner pushed that extra weight into the center. She said awesome, thank you. Last bit, you are welcome. All right, now, I would say the fun part, but I think the fun part's gonna be the dry cutting part. But we're gonna take down the top. Like this. Comb it all forward. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create over direction, but I want this haircut to flow this way to the right hand corner. So because I want that to flow, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take diagonal partings on the opposite side that I want it to go, All right? So bring it over here. I'll show you this parting so you can see it. So here is so it's kind of diagonal back into this corner. This is the side we want it to flow to. This is the side we're gonna bring it to. Let's see if I can show you the, on the top. 
Come on. Okay. So here, and you can see kind of this angle, instead of it being straight across like this, has a little bit more of an angle to it. Hopefully that helps you guys. And I'm gonna turn like this so you can see that over direction happen. So just know this is the front right hand side corner right here. And I'm bringing everything back to the back left hand side corner. And I'm taking my guide from this point right here. So that's where we're gonna start our cut. It's gonna come straight across, right like this. Joel would like to know what scissor and comb that you are using. So Joel, this is the this is on um, my scissor that we made. Uh, I made with Mizutani, and it's the five inch. Um, I really like working with a short scissor because it's the strongest scissor you can get. Right. So like the longer the blade of the scissor, the um, let me show you my face while we talk about this. So uh, scissor breakdown is pretty simple. Like the longer the scissor, the weaker the blade's gonna be. That doesn't mean it's a bad scissor. It just means that um, as it gets towards the tip, the strength gets weaker. Um, it's kind of like anything that's longer gets weaker. So like if I were to take uh, a tape measure and string it out, after you get past about six feet, it's gonna collapse. Um, just because it gets too long and weak. Um, I I just think that uh, with a scissor, the shorter the blade, because you're not cutting that much hair at, the at a time anyways, I'm only cutting little bits as I work across. I like to have a short blade and it gets in nice tight spots. I don't have to worry about like finagling my hand. So when you're doing precision cutting, uh, for the most part, I, I really like a five inch scissor. So. That's why we did make a five and a half, but I'm really trying to stick with the five inch because that's what I, I like using. Um, I sometimes like the five and a half just for like scissor over comb work and things that maybe you need to reach a little bit further on. But even scissor over comb, you can work pretty easily with a five inch scissor. So, um, so yeah. And the comb I'm using is a YS Park 334. Um, I like the 339 and the 334 both similarly um the 339 is a little bit smaller than the 334 so if you were looking for you just like getting into like the tighter spots around the nape and all of that like it could be a little bit better but um for the most part they both are similar so now i'm point cutting across because i want to add a little bit of texture to it we're going to do even some more texture in the uh in the dry portion of this cut as well. I'm just continuing these partings across the head, uh, taking the partings diagonally and then over directing back to the stationary guide. Here, there's my guide and I'm point cutting, adding in some texture. Now I am cutting past my second knuckle. Some of you guys uh, ask about that. I'm not worried about tension in this part of the haircut so much. And you will see me recombing and kind of working through. Um, that's the only reason you shouldn't cut past your second knuckle is because of tension. It has nothing to do with cutting yourself. I have cut my first knuckle many times. So it doesn't matter which knuckle it is. Um, but tension is a, is a key thing. Bring this back. Okay, and last bit. This is where it's gonna get really extreme because if you think about what's happening, the head's starting to curve down. So not only am I overdirecting this back, just like I did the rest of them, but this hair is coming from even further because it's gotta go around um, that round of the head. So this will actually fall pretty heavy, but that's okay because we're gonna go in and cut it dry as well. And I wanna go in there and texturize it a bunch and customize it. So we're not always cutting hair to the length that we want it to be. 
Um, sometimes we're just pushing weight forward so that we can mess with it later. Make sure I got that piece cut. Okay. Now I'm gonna push that forward and what you're gonna see is length here into the front. So that starts the kind of overall picture of the cut, um, which was recommended, I think, by Susan on the chat. She better still be here. Um, all right, so we're gonna blow it dry. That shouldn't take long, short hair. Um, I'm gonna use Invisible Wear Memory Shaper. Talked about this earlier. Create a style that is not overly styled and reworkable memory and rich shine. It's exactly what we want. First couple sentences on the bottle. So I'm gonna work that in uh, to the style. I like using a gel on short hair because um, gel is like an underused product, I think, in the fact that it, if you blow dry your hair, like if you don't just put it in your wet hair and go, it can get crunchy and that's not really what we're going for. But if you put it in the hair for the blow dry, whether you're a male or female, it works really well in controlling the style and adding volume into the hair. So just having that memory that you're kind of working through it. So that's one of the key things that I really love about uh, using gel. And what I'll teach a lot of the guys in the salon is use that product as your base, then put your finishing product in once the hair is dry. All right. So what I'm gonna do to uh, to dry the hair, because it's a mannequin, I'm gonna work a little closer to the scalp than I would on a human. But I'm just gonna work this hair down and then through the top, I'm gonna work back and forth using the head as kind of a roller, working that head shape so that I don't have a part in the hair. Because my goal is not to have a parting in the hairstyle. I'm working my way back and forth. I'll do a little bit of leafing, kind of lift the hair up. That'll give me a little bit of volume, but also pull tension on the hair to give me some of that smoothness and the shine as well. All right, Susan, I see you. Thank you, Joel. I feel like we got deep on the podcast today. I feel like we got a little deeper. And it was bumming me out a little bit. And now, like, I feel like I cut hair and now I'm, like, feeling... I'm feeling better. Susan, is this cut different than the short asymmetrical cut you did on the live redhead? 
Love your work, ideas, thought process. I don't know if I remember which one that is. Like the real redhead, like the real person? Is that, I wonder if that's what you're saying. I, it's probably similar. I remember that cut. Um, yes, I would say it's very similar to that cut. So um, I just don't, I don't know how to reference that video for anybody else, but yeah. All right. Oh, did you have this on? Oh no, it's unplugged. I was like, did I turn it off? All right, cool. Thank you, Carly. All right, so we'll fire this bad boy up. So now I'm gonna smooth it. The reason I like to smooth the hair is to get it um, into like, turn this up a little bit, chat with you guys while this warms. Um, the reason I like to, to get the iron or to iron the, the hair before I cut it is just to get it really nice and smooth. Right now, this is not um, very fun to cut, this kind of thicker texture um, in the hair. So what I'll do is I'll smooth it, get it kind of going in the direction I want it to, and then I just have more, um, it's more fun to cut it that way. So what I'll do is I'll take, she's going to wear it this way. So I'll take diagonal partings, take out some of the hair, just a little bit, bring that over to me. Now I'll brush it, but then I hold it with a lot of tension in my hand. Uh, this is something that I learned a long time ago when you're smoothing hair um, is to hold that tension nice and tight, just like you're going to cut it, put the iron up in the hair, and then keep that tension as you pass through. What that's going to do is allow less passes with the iron. So you can do just maybe one, two passes, and you get a nice smooth result, as opposed to working the hair, holding it in your hand, or just kind of going through with the iron like this, passing over it. Now, that's hot. There's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, you can do a lot less passes if you just hold that tension in there and work the iron across. Now, the other thing about ironing hair for, for cutting is that you shouldn't have to do too much work at the base. Because we work that flat wrap technique back and forth through it, you shouldn't have to worry about um, ironing the base to smooth it. You should have smoothed that with your brush and blow dryer. Now we're just working mid shaft to ends and kind of finalizing everything. So let me get in here. Come on, focus, focus. Went manual, I couldn't wait. It's like Amazon. <laughs> Can't wait for it anymore. All right, cool. My stomach just growled so loud. <laughs> All right, ironing. Now here's what's really cool about this cut, right? So these pieces are super short, fun, textured, tons of movement, and then it just gets super long in the front. We're gonna cut into this a little bit, but the fact that you have all that texture in there is really cool. So continue moving this over and ironing it this way, smoothing out that mid shaft to ends. I don't have to worry about these short pieces. I already blew them dry. They are already smooth. Now I'm gonna go back through the opposite way, just like this, same thing, diagonal. Take some of the hair, bring it over to me and iron it through. Give it a slight bend, pretend like I'm kind of following the head shape through it. Take your next section, hold it with tension, come through. And iron it over and I'll just keep working my way until I get to the end here bring it around and there we go piece of cake Little random guy over there. So let me show you the rotation. You can see disconnection under there and disconnection there. So this whole front is disconnected. We're going to cut some short pieces in here, connect them, but make them short to long in the front, 
create that texture. We already have texture up here. We'll do a little bit more point cutting and then we should be good to go on this style. So here we go. Go into that side. I'm a question reader. Well, Carly's kind of a question reader as mm -hmm. well. Camera guy. Radio hosting. We're doing it all, Carly. <laughs> We're doing it all. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working above this eye. I want to take these pieces, cut them shorter. So now I'm going to work on a stationary guide again. Um, that stationary guide is going to come from this corner. And just like... Um, I brought everything back to this corner to cut it to make it long over here. I'm going to do the same thing. Bring everything here. If you want hair to go from short to long, just work in a stationary guide. Pull everything to one place, then it gets longer and longer and longer as you pull it over. So here we go. It's coming over to me, just like this. I'm going to mimic my finger angle with the head shape. So see how I can show you. So kind of like this. So just know this is going over that parietal ridge area. I've got a guide from the point here. You don't have to use that as a guide, but I want to connect the back as well. I'm just going to come through here. Cut. Now, when I drop this down, I've got some short pieces starting around the eye. So I take another, you guys got the angle now. So I take another piece, like this, and I bring it up over that guideline right here, and I cut it. Point cutting it to create texture. You can see now all of a sudden we've got this texture happening. So another section, and we're working our way across the forehead. Over to me, and I cut. Another, over to me. Now this will again get a little more extreme because the head's starting to round off here. So this last piece is gonna come even further than the rest to give me that extra length. So don't be afraid of how short you think this is going to get because that last little bit really throws it over the edge, literally. Bring it over, there's barely even anything to cut at this point. So now you've got short to long. You can see it coming through just like that. Nice. Okay, so then you can start to see that texture building. Now we're gonna do some slide cutting. Grabbed a wider comb. This is a YS Park 332. Helps me get through um, dry hair a little bit easier. So let me zoom into this a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb everything straight down. And I'm going to start working by pinching the hair just like this. My scissor over top. And I'm just going to slide in and create not only some of the links that I want right around the corner of the eye here, but also just more texture and take out some of this bulk. So stationary guide does create a little bit of bulk depending on the density of the hair. So I go through here, I just soften it up, give it a little more modern effect. Susan, can you share that the name of that person that we're cutting after again, the inspiration, so I can show everyone on my phone. So you can see building that texture. And really, I'm just seeing if Susan's still here. She can't leave. This is her idea. Cutting into that texture. like that cool disconnection 
now, really, really digging it. I'm going to go through the, oh, geez, kicking her. All right, now I'm going to go through the top, same diagonal back partings, but just a little bit of point cutting in just to break it up. Cynthia. Oh yeah, Sergeant, Cal Sergeant Calhoun. I've been using a lot of your techniques and my clients and I'm really impressed. Thank you for showing me new ideas and I bought some of your combs. Oh, you're awesome, Cynthia. All right, point cut. Little extra texture up there. Taking out some density. I'm back. Okay. I'm going to give it a second. Let everybody catch up. They're all freaking out. <laughs> all right. So uh, what I was saying, just so we don't miss this part, um, this is Invisible Wear Cloud Whip from Paul Mitchell. The thing I love about this product is that it's a really light cream. Um, doesn't have a ton of hold. So... Um, when you're doing like a finished style with it, uh, you can work it in. It gives a lot of texture to the hair, but it's not really crunchy. It's not firm. It doesn't like feel like you have a ton of products in your hair. Um, and that's it. So I'll work that into this hairstyle. You can see it really like coming to life now. Matching up with our inspiration. And then what I love about, um, let me pull that up actually, that person that we're in, our inspiration here. Let me, Sergeant, what was it? Oh. Is it Calhoun? <laughs> Wreck it, Ralph. 
I thought it was a joke when she put it up there, and then it's a cool haircut. So at first I was definitely like, this is not a serious person. But Susan was not joking. All right, so here's our inspiration. I'll show it to you guys. Let's match it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> Carly's like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. So what I love is that she definitely has like this texture up here. Like that. Right? Give it a little more. She's got a little more kick in the in the root area. She's got a little more of a center part. But for the most part. And what else? And right here. Her pieces might be a little shorter than these, but I kind of like them like this. So sometimes it's not about mimicking exactly. But so what do you guys think? Love it. Let me zoom in. Arr. It's pretty fun. Beautiful. All right. I'll take it. Um, do you want to, yeah, super fun. All right. So let's, let's recap, meet you guys over here. Camera's off. Okay. <laughs> How do you feel about this day, Carly? Good. Little bumps along the way. We nailed it, know. though. I think we I think we ended up knocking it out of the park. Yes. <laughs> um. All right. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you to uh, everyone. There's so many people saying uh, that they loved it. That's great. Um. Hope you guys like the show. I mean, that's really... What do you think, Carly? I like it. So we're three days in. This is now the very first episode of Woke Up This Way podcast. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the beginning. I know it was a little retailish. It was a little venting. Not really venting, really. I mean, it was. I think it was educational. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, talked about the state of the industry a little bit. Um, next week, guess what? Sam Villa is coming, which is going to be a big deal. Huh? And Sam Villa, we're actually filming um, some stuff with him on Wednesday in the studio. But then at the same time, he's going to be here. So I'm going to make him be on this, which should be fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's probably going to make our day a little tighter. But if you got Sam Villa in the studio, you got to have him yeah. on here. Um, so that's what's coming up. So we'll probably, I have a class Monday. So we probably won't do this live show. Um, we'll be at the class. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, we'll do this for sure. Um, and then Wednesday, we'll do it again with Sam Via. Thursday, I plan on doing it again. I, the rest of the week, I plan on doing it. I want to do it every day because I feel like um, it's fun to connect with all of you guys. It, it was starting to feel like um, social media was just kind of there. It wasn't yeah. feeling like a community to me. So like being able to do this, be online, talk to you guys, see your, your names come across, asking questions. Um, what I would ask for you guys is if you could share this show with everyone that you know. Um, hopefully we can just get more and more people watching it. There's a lot more people that watch it when I start doing hair than when we're talking. But I'm hoping we can grow both because I think that the talking parts, even though they're not the most popular, are probably the most important. So, um, Hopefully, let's see. I think I see everybody. Yeah, thank you guys. You're all awesome. All right. So, uh, till next time, till uh, Tuesday, have a great weekend. Enjoy. Uh, be successful in the salon. Know that when you are not doing something, you're probably supposed to be doing something. <laughs> <laughs>
study the back of a bottle, study, you know, a haircut, study whatever it is, watch free salon education. There's so many options out there to grow yourself. Let's grow the industry. Let's make things better. Um, and Carly, thank you for hanging out two of days. Of course. <laughs> I'm going to steal you again next week. No problem. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for joining us in the first episode and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks. <laughs>